So I, I started out as a bedroom hacker, a bedroom kind of coder. Um, didn't really get into anything kind of naughty, but I was very interested in taking things apart, taking apart uh, musical instruments, um, toys, anything that made a sound, anything that was um, that I could use to kind of express myself. I was, you know, brought up in suburbia, so I was kind of fixated by the idea of turning suburbia into a soundscape. So it's. Um, yeah, it's, it kind of comes from what we call what we call chip tune music, reprogramming, rewiring old toys and video game systems to make music. And I kind of, you know, went along that route for quite a while. Uploaded a few videos to YouTube and got picked up by a few people to to work with them. Um, one of the ladies that I was very lucky to work with was Imogen Heap, a wonderful lady. She. Found, she saw one of my early videos on YouTube and she thought it was really strange and really weird and she was looking for an opening act in for Brighton the next day. So um, she just kind of emailed and contacted me and said, you know, can you come to Brighton the next day so we can have a chat. Um, so I showed up and um, I, I did, uh, did the set for her and became kind of friends with her and made some little gadgets and stuff for her. And uh, she's absolutely lovely. She's really passionate about music. And my professional life is split 50-50. I'm half a coder, half a musician. I couldn't be a, a good musician without my code and, like, and, and vice versa. There's no no way. I'm, I keep awful time. Um, I'm the worst drummer in the world, but I can, I can program machines to, to do what I want. So it made it, it empowered me to be able to make the music that was in my head and I just would not have been able to do that without coding, right? Um, if you're really interested in coding and, and music and things like that, you just have to try it. It's a lot easier than you, you think. You, you don't always have to jump in and make some big massive app. You just simply have to take small steps. I always, when I'm taking apart a new machine or a toy, I always think about it is if I can make it beep, I can make it do anything. So that's my target for like day one or two. I'm, I'm very, very passionate about getting kids coding. It's really important that we get them coding very young because their brain has a certain plasticity about it. They, it's very similar to learning another language. We're just, instead we're communicating to machines what we want. So the kids can take on more than what we actually often give them credit for. I start teaching kids around five. Um, because, you know, not, not massively in-depth program, just getting something silly to move around the screen um, and because it empowers them, they think, hang on, I actually can do this. I've been told for years that I, I could never do it, but I actually can. Um, there, are, there has been a real shift in culture around computing. In the 80s, there was this, you know, big boom of the BBC Micro. Everybody could program, everybody could do, do it all, but unfortunately, um, late late 80s, 90s, it became the kind of territory of being a, you have to be a computer professional. And it was just a way of, you know, companies and organizations selling you more things and removing you from the creative process. But fortunately, we're going back to, you know, everybody can do this and everybody should be involved in it. It's, um, it's really important that we kind of reclaim that. That's amazing. I've not really thought about that before. Oh. Yeah. That actually what was happening there was people being removed from that process yeah. and being sold the Thing. final piece, the final yeah. product. Yeah. That's incredible. Can you talk to me more about that? Yeah, I mean, kids. Yeah. I think I think it's really empowering. Um, if once you learn a bit about coding, you can start to look around the world and see other things that are made with code and other things that you can make change. I recently um, taught a few girls to code and they kind of looked at it and said, hold on, this computer is like a massive calculator um, but with pictures to express the outcomes instead. I was like, that's exactly it, that's exactly it. You use computers to solve problems, you know. You know, developers are problem solvers and, you know, everybody's a problem solver, so why isn't everybody a developer?